In this video, I'll show you the initial set of tests I did on the Apple Watch Ultra. First, I'll show you how the heart rate tracking performed during cycling, spinning, walking and weightlifting. And we will compare those results to 63 other watches I've tested over the last years. After that, we will take a look at the oxygen saturation measurements and the step counting performance. Hello everyone. For those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. Now today I spent the whole day testing different aspects of the new Apple Watch Ultra. I want to share those results with you in this video. As I mentioned, I will mostly focus on the heart rate tracking performance, but I will also take a look at the SpO2 measurements and the step counting. Now there are already many videos out there discussing the specs of this new Apple Watch Ultra. So let's not rehash that here, since you can also check that for instance on Apple's website. However, I did want to mention two things that I noticed while using the watch. First of all, the new packaging that the Ultra comes in is not as elongated as the packaging of the Apple Watch Series 8. So it does look a lot different from what we're used to with the normal Apple Watches over the last years. The material used is also more matte and textured than what is used for the Apple Watch Series 8. However, honestly, I don't really care about the packaging. But what surprised me is that this new packaging is about 16% larger in volume, which seems to go against the general aim of Apple to use smaller packaging and thereby reduce the number of shipping containers needed, which should reduce pollution. From what I understand, this was actually one of the reasons for removing the charging bricks from the iPhone packages. Now in moving on, I also briefly want to mention the watch band that came with the new Apple Watch Ultra. I selected the green Alpine loop, which I think looks really good. I was actually happy to see that the band is still a bit stretchy, which meant I could get it quite tight whenever I needed to. The ridiculous thing is though, that if you want to buy an extra band, these cost $99, which is crazily overpriced. If you take into consideration that you can buy the new Apple Watch SE, which includes a strap starting from $250, this sounds kind of crazy. Now you can use any band designed for other Apple Watches as well though, so you could consider buying one of those as an extra strap. Now that's enough background, let's dive into the first results of the heart rate test, for which I did 5 different types of exercise. To test that, I'll compare the heart rate measurements of the Apple Watch Ultra against the Polar H10 ECG chest strap, which can generally record my heart rate very accurately, as I showed you in a recent video. And we will start by looking at one of the easiest types of exercises for a watch to track, cycling indoors. Now this involves very little movement or tension on my arms and will therefore produce less noise. And here you can see an overview of that accuracy over the whole ride. Each dot here is a single heart rate measurement with along the horizontal axis the value according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap and on the vertical axis the value according to the Apple Watch Ultra. The closer the points are to the blue line, the better the agreement, and the darker black the color, the more dots there are. As you can see, there's a very good agreement between the Apple Watch Ultra and the ECG chest strap, as basically all points are super close to the blue line. The correlation, this R value up here, is also almost perfect, and allowing for two decimal points, it rounds to one. Now this correlation value cannot be higher than 1, so a rounded value of 1 is close to the best that we can expect. And we can see why that is if we actually look at the individual training session, and that's what we see right here. Along the horizontal axis we have the time, and my heart rate is along the vertical axis. In blue-green I plotted my heart rate according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap, and in red is my heart rate according to the Watch Ultra. As you can see, the two lines mostly overlap more or less perfectly. They overlap so well that we cannot see the red line at all. This means that the Apple Watch is basically spot on when it comes to heart rate for cycling indoors. Now I should note that these are initial results with a single workout for each type of exercise and I will release a full review of the Apple Watch Ultra in about a week with more detailed testing and also an analysis of the sleep stage tracking and GPS tracking accuracy, so also stay tuned for that. However, let's put this into perspective by comparing it to many of the other watches I've tested over the last two years. That overview is displayed right here. And the correlation value I was talking about before is the metric I will use for this. And that is displayed along the horizontal axis here. We want that value to be as close to 1 as possible. Now on the vertical axis I ordered the watches from worst to best. 
So the further to the right and the higher a device is, the better is its correlation with the reference device. And here I marked the Apple Watch Ultra in red. And as you can see, the Watch Ultra is actually amongst the best watches that I've tested over the last years. If we now zoom in and only keep the best performing watches, we can see that even more clearly. Now the Apple Watch Ultra is doing really well and it's close to a correlation of one. However, all the other newer Apple Watches perform about as well. And also some older Apple Watches are super close. I suspect that any improvements are due to firmware updates, so if I were to retest these older watches, they might perform similarly. One surprising thing is that by these metrics, the new Apple Watch Ultra performed even a bit better than wearing two ECG chest straps at the same time. Now there could be several explanations for this. One explanation could be that there's just error margins in any measurement, and by chance the Apple Watch performed a bit better. Or it could be the fact that I had to place this second strap lower than recommended, which is suboptimal. Or that it took more breaks in recent workouts, which would add more low heart rate measurements, balancing high and low heart rates better and potentially increasing the correlation value. So this is looking quite good, though this is still an initial test and I will try to release a more complete test in a few days. Next, let's briefly take a look at another easy type of exercise for a watch to track, walking outside. And a graph for those results is displayed right here. Again, in red is my heart rate tracked by the Watch Ultra, and in blue-green is the reference device. As you can see, the patterns of the two match quite well, and the Apple Watch follows along nicely with the chest strap, and I cannot see any significant deviations, so this is looking super good for the Apple Watch Ultra. Next, let's take a look at a more challenging type of exercise, cycling outside. Now while cycling outdoors, watches tend to shift a lot more on the wrist, making accurate heart rate readings much more difficult. Let's see if this influenced the heart rate accuracy of the Apple Watch Ultra. Here we see a similar overview plot to before, but now for biking outside. And as you can see, there's still a very good agreement between the Apple Watch Ultra and the ECG chest strap. Though there are a few more points away from the blue line now here in the lower heart rate range. However, overall, I'd not call this an issue. The correlation is slightly lower compared to what we saw before for cycling indoors, with the correlation now being 0.99, so this is still really good. And we can see that in more detail if you look at the bike ride itself. The red line representing the Watch Ultra follows along very nicely with the Polar H10 ECG chest strap. And we actually see that the Apple Watch was almost perfect. Here the red line is almost not visible at all, indicating that the heart rate detected by the Apple Watch was almost identical to the ECG chest strap. We can again put this into perspective by looking at many of the watches I've tested over the last years. Now similar to before, we will use the correlation with the ECG chest strap as the value on the horizontal axis, and the better the agreement, the more to the top right the device is. And as you can see, the Apple Watch Ultra, which is marked in red, is again amongst the best performing watches when it comes to heart rate tracking. It seems to be about as good as many of the other Apple watches and also some Huawei watches are very close. And we can see that a bit better again if we zoom in. And as you can see, this is looking really good. The Apple Watch Ultra is very close to the Apple Watch 7, Apple Watch SE and Apple Watch 8. And as I said, also some Huawei watches. However, so far, these exercises represent easy and medium heart exercises for a watch to track for heart rate. So let's now move on to one of the most difficult exercises for a watch to track, weightlifting. This is much more difficult because of the increased tension on my wrist and on my arm, making it much harder for the watch to get a clean heart rate signal. However, first a quick side note. If you're interested in the latest updates on the wearables I'm testing, I'm planning to start back up with my newsletter and posting more off the cuff things on my Instagram and my YouTube Shorts channel. So if you're interested in any of those, those are linked below. Of course, you would also make me really happy and it would help my efforts if you subscribe to this YouTube channel. But of course, this is totally up to you. Now enough self-promotion, let's take a look at the performance during weightlifting. Here we can see an overview of that accuracy, similar to before. However, now the performance of the Apple Watch Ultra is a tiny bit worse compared to before, showing a correlation of 0.97 and a few more points being away from the blue line. However, overall this still looks very good, almost no other watch has this good a performance during weightlifting. And we can again see why that is based on the individual training session. Again in blue-green we see the results of the ECG chest strap 
and then read the results of the Apple Watch Ultra. Each time I do a set of exercises, my heart rate increases, as you can see in blue according to the chest strap. Now the Apple Watch Ultra is also able to detect these peaks in my heart rate, which is really good. Almost no other watches, except for some other Apple Watches, are able to do it this well. We can again show this by comparing it to many of the other watches I've tested in the past, and we see those results in this overview right here. Again, the more to the top right the device is, the better is its consistency with the ECG chest strap. And as you can see, relative to other watches, the Watch Ultra, which is marked in red, is really again amongst the best watches when it comes to heart rate tracking, now also for weightlifting. And this again becomes even more clear when we zoom into the part with the best watches. Again, the Apple Watch Ultra is about as good as the current and previous generation of Apple Watches and some Huawei watches. Out of all of the watches I've tested over the last years, I would only really recommend Apple Watches and some select Huawei watches for heart rate tracking during weightlifting. Otherwise, as I often mention, the better and cheaper option is to buy an ECG chest strap. So based on my initial testing, I would conclude the Watch Ultra seems to be about as good a heart rate tracker as the new Apple Watch 8 and the 2022 Apple Watch SE, but it's also about the same as the older generation watches, going back to the Apple Watch Series 6 for instance. So that means that the optical heart rate sensor of the Apple Watch Ultra appears to be very good at heart rate tracking, like most Apple Watches. However, how does it perform at measuring something different, namely your oxygen saturation, or in other words, SpO2? Where heart rate is usually recorded using green light, red and infrared light are generally used to track oxygen saturation. To test the oxygen saturation measurements, I wanted to see if the Watch Ultra ever detects a low oxygen saturation when it's not supposed to. And I did this by taking measurements with the watch when I knew my SpO2 was at normal levels. To test that, I took 74 SpO2 measurements with the Ultra, and in between I reattached the watch to my wrist several times and also switched the measurements between arms. At the same time, I also recorded my oxygen saturation with a dedicated finger pulse oximeter. Now at ground level, my oxygen saturation should be in my normal range, which is generally between 97 and 100% and should not fall below roughly 95%. However, when the effective oxygen concentration is much lower, as it is for instance in a low air pressure environment, my oxygen saturation can drop below 90%. The same can happen for instance when you have certain medical conditions like sleep apnea or a respiratory infection. And here you can see the measurements I took at ground level. On the left are 74 measurements taken with the Apple Watch Ultra, and on the right the matching measurements taken with the finger pulse oximeter. On the vertical axis are the SpO2 values and each dot is a single measurement. And as you can see, the Apple Watch Ultra generally recorded a slightly wider range of SpO2 values, but it's overall not too bad. Almost all of the measurements are 95% or higher. Now this is somewhat surprising as the Apple Watch 8 that I recently tested appear to do slightly worse in these tests and it actually has the same sensors though there might be some factors that I'm not aware of that also influence this. And we can see that even more clearly if we display these results as a histogram. In this case, the SpO2 values are along the horizontal axis, and the larger the bar, the more often this value was recorded. And as you can see, the Apple Watch, displayed here in red, mostly recorded normal SpO2 values, though it did tend to record slightly lower values than the finger pulse oximeter, which is displayed here in blue. However, there were only very few occasions where it recorded an SpO2 level of 94% and it never recorded a lower level, which is really good. So this result is quite okay and has given me a bit more confidence in the SpO2 sensor of Apple Watches, since it did not look too amazing when I was testing it for the Apple Watch Series 8. I'm actually not sure if this had to do with the fit of the watch for instance, or if it was due to random chance. Now the next thing I tested on the Apple Watch Ultra is the step counting accuracy. To test the step counting accuracy, I went out and took exactly 4,000 steps with the Watch Ultra. Now I do not like counting 4,000 steps in my head, which is why I counted each step manually using this tally counter. Let's take a look at those results. And here are the results for those 4,000 steps, where I wore the Apple Watch Ultra on my left arm. Along the horizontal axis is the time, and the total number of steps counted is on the vertical axis. Now the diagonal blue-green line represents the steps that the Watch Ultra counted, and the blue lines indicate the moments that it should have counted 1000 steps more. 
So the first line indicates 1,000 steps, the second line 2,000, 3,000 and 4,000. As you can see, the Apple Watch Ultra was pretty consistent and it generally was very close to the steps it should have counted, which is good, though it might have counted just a few steps too little near the end here. I actually wore the new Apple Watch 8 at the same time but on the other wrist, which is displayed here in the same plot in red. And we can actually see that both watches performed more or less similarly, both consistently counting more or less the correct number of steps. So this is also looking quite good. However, the next question is if the Apple Watch Ultra ever counts steps when it's not supposed to, for instance when doing activities that don't involve walking. Now those results are displayed here for four activities we looked at before on the vertical axis. So that's walking, spinning, weightlifting and biking. On the horizontal axis is the number of steps per minute that the Apple Watch counted for each of these activities. Ideally, it would count about zero steps during all of these activities, except for walking of course, which should give a significant number of steps per minute. As you can see on top, when I was walking, it counted about 90 steps per minute, which is a normal walking pace. Now when cycling outside, it counted zero steps per minute, which is really good, as you can see in red right here. When weightlifting in purple here, it did count some steps but only very few, so this could be due to the normal few steps I took during weightlifting. However, I did do these exercises at home, so I didn't have to move a lot. Interestingly though, while spinning, it did count some more steps, roughly 5 steps per minute. Though this is much less than while walking, it is still surprising to me that it counted some steps during this very static type of exercise. So overall, the step counting performance of the Apple Watch Series 8 is quite good. When you're walking, it counts roughly the correct number of steps and it counts very few steps during other activities. But before moving on, I do have to mention some of the limitations of the test that I showed you in this video. Now there are multiple limitations, but I think the most important is that this is just a first test with a very limited amount of data. Second, the results reflect how the watch performed on my personal physiology and it might vary depending on for instance your skin tone, gender or body mass. Still, overall, based on these tests, I am quite happy with the performance of the Apple Watch Ultra. It seems to have great heart rate tracking, good step counting and decent SpO2 measurements. We've also seen in my other videos that the sleep tracking accuracy of the new Apple Watch algorithm appears to be very reliable. Though of course I still have to formally test that on the new Apple Watch Ultra. I'm also really curious to see how the improved GPS tracking performs, since it was already pretty decent on the other Apple Watches in my test. Now all of this being said, I do think that the Apple Watch Ultra has a very hefty price tag and I would personally probably buy an Apple Watch SE instead or an Apple Watch Series 7 or 8 if I had a bit more money to spend. Yes, the Ultra has a bigger screen, bigger battery and potentially a better GPS and some cool new functionalities, but I personally don't really need these. So it's really up to you to decide if you want to spend that extra money. But more on that in my full review of the Apple Watch Ultra. Now if you do want to buy the Apple Watch, another device or anything at all on Amazon for that matter, even something as small as toilet paper and at the same time support the channel. There are different affiliate links in the description below that do not cost you any extra and some even provide a discount. Now since you might be considering getting the Apple Watch Series 8 instead, check out my full review on that right here. And for many people I think the 2022 Apple Watch SE is more than good enough and once that video is out you can find it right here. Now I hope this video provided you with some value, thank you so much for watching and catch you in the next video.